David Brewster here with a debut episode of a new series on this channel, and this is Soloing Secrets. And the first episode is going to focus on David Gilmour, and I've had tons of feedback and requests for more David Gilmour and Pink Floyd. And over the years, you know, teaching guitar, I've had lots of guitar students ask, you know, what's going on with David Gilmour? Because I've had students, you know, that have dived into transcription books and looked at solos from Comfortably Numb and Money and Time and Shown on You Crazy Diamond and all this stuff. And they usually scratch their heads, you know, when they start looking at the leads and solos and licks, you know, from Gilmore. And they see lots of pentatonic scales and simple phrases and bending. And, you know, there's really nothing crazy going on because Gilmore is not a shredder. There's no tapping. There's no sweeping. There's no string skipping. It's all just pure phrasing and melodies and bending and vibrato and all this stuff. And it is very elusive because... Even though it may seem like there's not much going on compared to someone like Yngwie, there's actually a lot going on in David Gilmour's music and the music from Pink Floyd. And it's kind of hiding like behind the scenes. So this lesson is going to kick off the Soloing Secret series. But we're going to dive in pretty deep and really look at some of those things that make David Gilmour sound so great. As far as Gilmore's secrets, they're not really secrets. They're just things that you'll notice and pick up after you've studied a lot of his music. Habits and these little quirky things that he does, you know, when he plays guitar. And that's modified blues, you know, phrasing, those bending and vibrato licks, of course, you know, random noises and effects. But, you know, one thing that he does a lot is he targets triads while he's soloing. And he also targets uh, notes other than the root. Like, he targets a lot of thirds and fifths, like with bending and sliding into notes and stuff like that. So we're going to hit some of that stuff in this lesson, but here's an image with some of David Gilmour's soloing secrets. So I just mentioned triads, and I actually did an acoustic guitar chords episode of Chord Play, you know, right before this. And you could kind of view this lesson as a continuation of the acoustic guitar chords episode, because we're going to be still dealing with triads. And the only difference is that episode was focused on using those triads and chords, you know, for rhythm work. And here we're going to be targeting and using these triads for guitar solos and leads. But here's an image with some Pink Floyd songs where you can actually see David Gilmour targeting triads, you know, during a guitar solo or some licks, you know, within the song. For the intro jam, that was actually a little segment from David Gilmour uh, during the Live at Pompeii home video. And he's really just jamming. It's like this off-the-cuff kind of loose jam. And it's just him, you know, by himself. But it's a very famous clip, and I wanted to show the clip in this episode, but I figured I'd probably get flagged for copyright violation or something, because I can guarantee that this clip is protected. But here's an image showing, like, the cover of Live at Pompeii, in case you haven't seen it. If you're a Pink Floyd fan, you have to see Live at Pompeii. It's mandatory. And then there's a couple images from the scene where he's kind of jamming through this little kind of triad jam. But here's an image to help you find this. So during this little triad jam, he's really just moving between C5 and D5, and then he starts vamping on that D minor chord right there. And it's real quiet and kind of subdued. Kind of a variation from the song Echoes. It's not exact, not exactly like Echoes, but it's kind of reminiscent of that little jam during that song. And then all of a sudden you hear uh, a noticeable shift. I don't know if he just changed the channel or what. But then you hear he's basically grabbing this A and C, which you could think of that as part of a D7. If you want to think of it like a chord. Or it's just, you know, this little partial uh, area right there. But he's basically grabbing that as a double stop and with the bar dipped. And then he raises the bar up like this. 
It almost sounds like a slide guitar lick, but it's just that double stop with the bar. <laughs> milks that B into C like a half step bend and then you're coming down this G and grabbing D there on the G and the D string and you could actually think of that as like part of a G triad right there because he's kind of playing with that so right there he's basically sliding into this little uh, F triad right there Right there you're grabbing part of a C triad and then part of a B flat triad. And it's really just, you know, there's the G triad we're gonna hit right there, this F, that C, and that B flat. And you can actually see Gilmore just targeting triad fingerings right there on the fretboard. those D triads again. We're going to look at D major and D minor. And we did look at this in the acoustic guitar chords episode of chord play, but that was chord based. And now we're taking these triads and finding licks and these melodies and phrases using them. So if we start with D major, you know, there's the D major scale. I'm going to grab the root, the third and the fifth or D, F sharp and A. Just a heads up, but those are the three strongest notes in the key of D right there, in D major. You know, the root, the third, and the fifth are going to have the strongest pull or, you know, sound against that chord. So we can find that little triad right there, just a friendly old D major chord. You know, there's your A, D, and F sharp. Move up again right there, and you've got D, F sharp, and A. Move up again right there, you've got F sharp, A, and D. Here's an octave higher than where we started. Just put a D major chord on the 14th fret. And you can even stretch up here and grab another D right there. And that's on the 19th and 17th fret. So right there, it's just mapped out, you know, D major. You know, all the way on the top three strings right there. And we basically did that in the acoustic guitar chords episode. And now we're doing it again. Now I'm going to briefly hit major right here. Um, and there are a lot of Pink Floyd songs that are in major keys, but you'll find more often than not, most of Pink Floyd's music's in a minor key, which is probably why I'm such a big Pink Floyd fan. So we're just going to briefly hit the majors, and then we're going to really dive into the minors. There was the image with the major triads on the fretboard, and we're going to do the exact same thing with the minor triads. All we have to do is take those same shapes, and we're just going to lower F sharp to F, and they'll magically change from major to minor. So here was D major. Just take that F sharp and move it down a half step. There's D minor. Here's D major. Take this F sharp, move it down a half step. There's D minor. Here's D major. Take this F sharp, move it down a half step. Now there's D minor. And just keep going. Major to minor. You know, major to minor. And you can actually sneak all the way up here on the 22nd fret and find another minor triad right there in D, which is really interesting. But here's a fretboard diagram showing you the D minor triads on the neck. So I briefly mentioned this earlier, but those triads are basically delivering the strongest notes over the chord you're playing or the chord they came from. You know, so we're playing over D minor. And any of those, you know, D minor triads are going to really stand out, the notes from them. So instead of playing them like chords, like that, we're going to separate the notes. And I also want to create little melodies here. So I'm going to play the lowest note, then the highest note, and then the note in the middle on every shape. And that's just going to create a basic melody like this. <laughs> Nothing exciting yet. But I just grabbed A, F, and ended on D. Just help me create a basic melody. Let's do it again right there. Grab, you know, D, A, and then end on F. And I'm grabbing the bar, you know, kind of like Gilmore. And do it again right there. F, D, and then end on that A. And the thing I'm doing right there, you can probably hear it and see it. I'm not really playing it like a chord. I'm finding ways to separate those notes. the minor 
minor shape way up here. You know, way up there. But basically what you're doing is you're starting to look at those little triad shapes a little bit differently. And to really help drive this home, let's just use that little vamp from earlier here. But then right there it's kind of like almost highlighted in a way like hey those are your strong notes even though we're still playing you know pentatonic but you know those notes are very strong so you know you're targeting that f that a and that d you could also do it with bending you could also do it with sliding like into another position like that or you could target that a you know with a bend triads you can see that little kind of highway or path and you know in the back of your mind just think okay any of those notes are money notes you know target notes right there because they're gonna sound great over that D minor chord now that I have you thinking about the root the minor third and the fifth over D minor and we're using those triad fingerings you know just for targeting those notes over the chord um, we can start thinking a little bit outside the box as far as bending too and you know typically when you hear a lot of guitarists bend to the root like they'll play the flat seven say we're in the key of D, they grab C and then you bend that up to D a whole step. That's a very common bend. You know, it sounds great. And Gilmore bends to the root all the time. But one of his kind of secrets, you know, as far as string bending, is he bends to the minor third and he bends to the fifth a lot too. So we're in D, right? So you gotta think, you know, where F is. So just kind of map your octaves right there. And if we're thinking of the minor pentatonic box right there, you know, if he was going to target that F, he would probably grab E and bend a half step into it. You know, or maybe kind of slide into it. You know, there's your F. And he might bend into that minor third, you know, the F, and then he might actually target that E note there, you know, the ninth, like that. And the other note he loves to bend into, and he does this a lot, is the fifth. So we're in the key of D, or D minor. Fifth is, is A right there. So think of that minor pentatonic box, you know, bend that G up to A. Gilmore loves bending the fifth, or to the fifth, rather. And right here, if you think of this triad we found, you know, D minor, right there's a G. We could grab that and bend that up a whole step and find the fifth again, that A note. transfer over to some of Gilmore's extended bending that he's known for. You know, if we grab the C note and bend that up to D, that's a whole step, right? And then if we grab this D note and bend it up a step and a half, there's F. Right? 
right? There's the first Gilmore Band. Right? A minor third or a step and a half. And then if you want to reach up here and grab that F and bend it up two whole steps all the way to A, there's another big Gilmore Band. And you can definitely hear Gilmore do any of those. The, the whole step, the step and a half, and the two whole step. And we did all this minor chord targeting. We can also flip it back to major. And I'm going to use some examples directly from Pink Floyd for this. So think of Mother, you know, and during the guitar solo and the last lick in the solo, you know, it's basically played over G. So we're in G major. And you can definitely hear Gilmore doing this. Uh, Slick in the lead right here. And right there, we're, you know, we're playing over G major. And right here, there's a G major triad, right? It's the D shape, but we're moved up to the seventh fret right there. So there's G, and that's literally what Gilmore's targeting right there. And he's basically targeting like the sus4 of G. He's grabbing, you know, that uh, C note right there. So he's doing that. slides, you know, down uh, the fretboard right there, he's basically setting himself up to target the root, that G. Like that. And another example of this would be the solo from Comfortably Numb, right? And here, we're basically targeting, now we're in D, and the chord progression's moving from D to A. Right there, you basically hear him target, and he almost kind of sweeps through this little D major shape. Right? And he's literally just targeting that D triad right there. And he bends this D to E. there he bent that D to E, brought it back down, then he grabbed C sharp and then targeted this A and E. So he's cleverly, you know, moving between that D triad and then ending on that A right there. So that's a famous solo, but you can see the triads right there. You know, which is definitely, it's, it's eye-opening to see that. All right, that's going to wrap the debut episode of Soloing Secrets with a special look at David Gilmore and some of his fretboard secrets. And there's something about Gilmore. I mean, he's one of my favorite players for sure. There's all this energy and conviction and emotion and feel, you know, when he plays. Great tone, great phrasing, you know, impeccable bending and vibrato. I mean, he sounds like a vocalist, you know, but he's playing all those, you know, melodies and stuff on the guitar. It's brilliant. You know, I love hearing him play. It just inspires me. Makes me want to pick up a guitar. Makes me want to write music that sounds like Pink Floyd, for sure. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.